Hi everyone, welcome to this video on accounting and society. In this video, we are going to learn and try and understand the function and role of accounting in society. Uh, we're also going to try and understand the morality of the market, right? So is the market good or bad, uh, you know, and, and how does accounting uh, relate to the market itself. Uh, we're also going to try and understand the nature of the accounting profession, what makes it a profession, and critically evaluate uh, the function of the accounting profession itself. Let's start by exploring uh, the accounting profession. Now, as accountants, we perform an important role in society. We provide information that is useful for uh, members of society uh, to make economic decisions. And these economic decisions will have impact on all uh, you know, levels of society, including uh, you know, companies, including uh, government uh, and the general public itself. So because of this role that we play as an accountant in society, uh, we are expected to act and behave in a professional and ethical manner. Now in Malaysia, we have a couple of professional bodies that um, accountants belong to. So we have the Malaysian Institute of Certified Public Accountants, MICPA, and of course, we have the Malaysian Institute of Accountants, which is the overarching governing body of accountants in Malaysia. Uh, we also have uh, various international accounting professional bodies operating in Malaysia. Uh, we have the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, ACCA. We have the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales, the ICAW. We also have the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, or CIMA. We also have professional bodies from Australia. For example, we have CPA Australia. Now, all these accounting professional bodies are globally. Uh, we belong to a global professional uh, body itself. We call it the International Federation of Accountants. So uh, there are over there are many millions of uh, professional accountants uh, in globally uh, in the world. In Malaysia, we have about uh, 30, 30 over thousand uh, professionally qualified uh, accountants in Malaysia as well. So uh, what makes a profession uh, a profession, right? So what makes the accounting uh, the accountants a professional uh, a body? If we were to describe a profession, then it will include uh, some of these uh, factors. Number one is that um, the profession comprise uh, a group of individuals, right? And these group of individuals uh, have got a certain uh, set of values, a certain set of skills and a certain set of values, then they, uh, their, their goal and their purpose is to promote the set of values within society. So uh, what are these uh, values and characteristics uh, of a uh, professional bodies f like accountants, for example? So normally, uh, you know, accountant or any profession would have a body of knowledge behind it. So in accounting, we have the, uh, the body of knowledge of accountancy behind it, of how to prepare financial statements, uh, how to uh, analyze uh, financial statements or financial fin financial information, and uh, you know another important characteristic, characteristics as I mentioned just now, is that we provide this information to serve the public, to ensure that the economy in it as a whole is running smoothly and efficiently, and uh, there is an efficient allocation of scarce resources. So we serve the public in that sense. And we serve it in a non-biased way. We must not be influenced by any particular self-interest uh, or any particular organization or any particular group of people. So we must exercise our independence 
uh, independence in not just our work, but independence in terms of our thought as well. Uh, so we, you know, independence is a very important characteristic. And of course, in order to be able to function well in all these uh, areas, then there must be sufficient level of education and training uh, that is provided. And this applies not just to the accounting profession, but to other professions as well. For example, to the legal profession, to the medical profession, to the engineering profession as well. Now, uh, you know, as a professional body uh, like the accountancy profession, there are certain ethical characteristics that need to be, that is very important to the profession. In accounting, we have three very important uh, ethical characteristics. Number one is uh, to serve the public, to be independent, and to follow and comply and, and adhere to a set, a set of code of conduct. Okay. Let's explore these and examine these uh, ethical characteristics in, in more depth. Number one, uh, public interests. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, as professional accountants, we provide a service to the public. Uh, and we therefore need to serve the public. We cannot do harm to the public. We cannot provide false information. We must provide accurate and reliable information that will benefit society in general. Right? And in order to do this, we must provide impartial information. We must be objective. We must state what is a fact. Right? And we must report this fact. Now, that's that's one of the key ethical characteristics of the profession to serve the public interest. However, it's not always easy for the accounting profession to serve the public interest because the accountants themselves um, have got a commercial side to our, our, um, our role as an accountant. Uh, we need to earn a particular income as well so that we can live in society. Uh, we earn the income through being employed as an accountant in an organization or in a company. Uh, we also earn income to providing our service uh, to cl our clients and we charge them a fee uh, for our service as well. So there is a commercial orientation to what the accountant does. And this commercial orientation often conflicts with our public interest, professional, ethical uh, uh, responsibility all right so uh, so there is going to be a conflict and we the managing of this conflict is not always easy but, but that's something uh, we also need to discuss in in future uh, uh, videos as well let's now look at independence okay uh, independence is linked very closely to the idea of serving the public so if we are going to serve the public we must not be influenced by any self-interest or certain groups uh, within society itself. Okay? We must be uh, non-biased, we must be objective, uh, and we must provide information that is um, uh, reliable. Okay? So therefore, there needs to be a separation from our personal interests, business interests, commercial interests, and our professional relationships. Okay? So that's a very important uh, ethical characteristic. But we can view independence from a broader sense as well. Uh, we can also ask our question, uh, the question of whether accounting itself, is it neutral? Right? Is it providing a neutral view, uh, a complete view of, of a particular uh, situation? Uh, you know, we can say that accounting can, is often biased towards a financial view of a particular business. Uh, we, we focus a lot on financial information. Uh, you know, we don't provide enough non-financial information. And non-financial information is often, if not more important, is equally important to the financial side as well. Uh, so we, we, you know, we need to balance that. We are very often focusing more on the financial side. And that's why accounting has now embraced uh, a, a broader scope. Uh, we, have now, we are now going into what we call integrated reporting, which looks at not just financial information, but also uh, non-financial information as well. 
The third characteristic of a, of a profession is that we follow a certain code of conduct. Okay? Uh, and this code of conduct uh, enables us to self-regulate ourselves to ensure that all members of our profession follow these ethical characteristics uh, which is either explicitly or implicitly written uh, in principles and rules. Okay? Explicit means that it's actually written in clear uh, in documents. Uh, implicit means they are just um, expectations of society. Okay? Um, so that's important. Uh, and, and we will also look at these code of conduct uh, in a separate video later on. Uh, but just following a code of conduct, whether it's written or unwritten, is not enough. Uh, we need to really internalize these ethical values into our thinking uh, so that we don't only behave ethically because we are told to do so. We behave ethically because that's inherently our value system as well. Uh, so that's very important as well. So these are the three uh, important ethical characteristics of the accounting profession. Public interest, independence, and a set of code of conduct that we need to follow. Now let's look at a broader view of accounting. Uh, let's look at the function of accounting in society as a whole, and also explore the morality of the market. Is the market promoting a certain set of values? We want to answer the question, is accounting amoral? Or accounting really promotes a certain set of value systems? Let's look at accounting. Uh, accounting is not uh, uh, something that exists in a vacuum. Uh, accounting exists in an economic system. And the economic system that we are familiar with is the free market capitalistic economic system. What, is the, what are the characteristics of this free market system? Uh, first of all, the free market system promotes the idea of private ownership of means of production. Uh, this private ownership is uh, determined through uh, the owning the, uh, of shares in companies. These companies can be small, Sundrian Berhad companies, can also be large Berhad companies. Uh, so, there is a tendency in a free market system to promote shareholder primacy in the sense that uh, these owners of uh, factors of production are, are, are important groups of people and we provide financial information for these group of people. Uh, and the idea that in a free market, uh, com competition is good. Competition enables the allocation of the efficient allocation of scarce resources uh, and the idea that if you are better at uh, allocating the resource, you will flourish, you will be um, uh, growing as a company, as a business. And if you don't, then you will uh, go into bankruptcy and you close shop uh, and, and a new company will then uh, take over. Uh, so that's the idea of a free market uh, system. Uh, but of course, this creates a lot of social problems. Uh, this creates, um, you know, the, the, the gap between the rich and the poor. And, and it's creating a lot of social problems in a particular country as well. And within the free market system as well, there is a clear division of, uh, between capital uh, and labor. Uh, capital uh, uh, by the providers of capital, as I said just now, the shareholders. Uh, labor's workers are merely factors of production. And this creates problems in terms of how we view the workers. We view workers in terms of resources. We don't view workers as people. Uh, you know, and, and as a result, there's, there's a lot of cases of abuse of workers uh, that is practiced in, in various businesses as well. Even within the capital itself, we focus a lot on um, the artificial and financial capital. Uh, we, look, we focus on things like um, uh, monetary uh, capital. Uh, we, we focus a lot on manufactured capital, machines and things like that. Um, we don't focus enough on our natural capital. Uh, you know, the idea that the environment is very important. 
uh, we don't focus on that so much because we cannot quantify in dollars and cents and therefore we ignore the environment. So that's another key characteristic of, of a free market system itself. And finally, in the, the free market system promotes uh, profit maximization. Profit is very important. Financial profit is very important. But there are other value-added um, you know, impacts on society, including uh, social value uh, and the environmental value. But we don't consider this uh, or we don't place enough importance on this in a free market capitalistic system. So as a result, it can be argued that the free market capitalistic system is not amoral. It promotes a certain set of values and it may not be all good for society. And if accounting functions within that free market, then we also play the, the role of promoting this free market types of values. And therefore, accounting itself may not be amoral uh, as, as, a, as a profession. So we need to change and we need to adapt and we need to be aware of this. So that's very important to understanding the function of accounting in society. So finally, um, what, why is it that we need to study ethics in, 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 as part of an accounting course? Uh, what is the importance of ethics in the accounting profession? Uh, because of what we have discussed just now, um, we, we are seeing a lot of recurring, consistently recurring corporate scandals over the last you know, 50, 100 years. All right? And these corporate scandals are creating a lot of problems in societies, not just in terms of the impact to people, but the in impact to the environment as well. Uh, so we need to talk more about ethics. You know, why are corporate scandals happening, what's the role of ethical values in these corporate scandals. Uh, we're also seeing the advent of Industrial Revolution 4.0, where you will see a lot more artificial, in, artificially intelligent machines taking over the function. We are looking at uh, technologies that we cannot understand, things like blockchain uh, and, and cryptocurrency and all that. And all these have an impact on uh, how uh, we act and how the econom economy uh, operates as well. Uh, and therefore, accountants, um, being human beings, we need to focus more on um, what makes us human, which is our ethics and our morality. Uh, we need to know how to manage this technology. And we need to see how we can use this technology for good and not abuse this technology. And finally, we are living in a, uh, an, uh, an era of climate crisis uh, caused by a lot by businesses and the mismanagement of businesses. And as a result, if we want to create a world where uh, our development is more sustainable, then we need to talk about ethics. We need to talk about what is right and what is wrong. So therefore, you know, because of all these, it's really, really important that in any accounting course, we incorporate the discussion of ethics uh, within that course itself. So in summary, um, let, me ask, let me answer a couple of questions. Will the study of ethics make you more ethical? Well, personally, I hope it will, but I don't think you can change your ethical values overnight. Right, ethical values is based on our core beliefs and it's influenced by our experiences throughout our lives. So it may be not that easy to change your behavior from, uh, to become more ethical overnight. What we hope to do in an ethical co ethics course, in, a, in, in an accounting course, is that you understand ethics a little bit more and you are able to think more ethically and apply ethical thinking in what we do in accounting and in business. So till I meet you in another video, please take care and stay safe.